Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now Podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shoma, and I am on a euphoric high right now. The New York Yankees just finished off the Kansas City Royals in the American League Divisional Series. Three to one in the game, three to one in the series. Garrett Cole pitched a masterful game. Aaron Judge might have gotten off the schneid a bit, had a double, a couple of walks. John Carlos Stanton is our MVP right now. But that's not what this is about. This is about the game one WNBA finals between the Minnesota Lynx and the New York Liberty in Brooklyn, New York. I have to say that I'm very disappointed that Spike Lee chooses to be at the Brooklyn at the New York Liberty game over being at the Yankees game. You're you're supposed to be a Yankee. I mean, Yankees always come first. Spike Lee, you are a Yankee first. As I was saying, Spike Lee, you're a Yankee first. You're supposed to be at the Yankees game first, but hey, you made a decision. I I, I don't know what to say. But Let's talk about this game. Let's talk about this game. I did not watch it. I admit when I say I didn't watch it. I watched the final 25 seconds of regulation, and I watched the the overtime. That's what I watched. That's all I care. I mean, realistically, the Yankee game, Yankee game was ending, or actually it was still going on, but I was trying to do both. I was, I was watching both, but... When I saw it was a three-point game, I was like, "Let me turn, let me turn this thing on," because I saw earlier it, it was it was a it was a wide margin. The, the Liberty was up huge in the first half. In fact, up 15 in the fourth quarter with 5:20 to go, and the Minnesota Lynx go on an 18-3 run, actually an 18-2 run, to take the lead with five and a half seconds to go on a Courtney Williams three-point shot where she got fouled by Sabrina Ionescu, and she makes the free throw for a four-point play to give the Lynx an 84-83 lead with five and a half seconds left. But getting to that point, you had a team that completely melted down. The New York Liberty melted down. Let's look at this. From the 520 mark, where they hit a three, you gave up a three, turnover, turnover. Foul. Let's see here. They called the one. They called the timeout with 339 up nine. They hit a layup. That's their only bucket. They take a three turnover. So three turnovers. Missing 14 footer. Turnover. Four turnovers. Miss uh da, 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 just going through this. Uh, Miss 12 footer. Miss, a, miss, a, miss another bucket. Well, here we are now. They called another timeout. So they called two timeouts in the final five minutes and change with 42.1. They were down, they were up 83-80 still. And then, again, another turnover. They tur- The New York Liberty turned the ball over five times in the final five minutes. Five times in the final five minutes. This is... For as thrilling a finish as it may have been. Oh, by the way, did I tell you who won the game? The New York, the the Minnesota Lynx won the game 95-93 in overtime. Just so you know. If I didn't tell you already, there you go. 95-93. Oh, yeah, I forgot to also tell you. Be sure to go check out my other page, uh, Rudy's Rant, R-U-D-Y-S, Rant. I will put it right here for you to see. This is where you can go. I'm going to be putting other content here on YouTube. So go check out Rudy's Rant and go subscribe there. Rudy's Rant on YouTube. That is a new channel that I am putting together. I'm still going to continue doing everything I'm doing here, but I'm going to be doing some more stuff over there as well. But, yeah, go check it out. I greatly appreciate it. Go subscribe, ring that bell, etc. But let's get back to this. This is what happened in the final 25 seconds and change. And I will say that there is a combination of things that happened in this game. One, 
for as thrilling a finish as it was, because I did watch the final five and a half minutes, the last 30 seconds or so of regulation, along with the five minutes of overtime. I watched some of the most atrocious officiating in the history of man. The officiating was so ungodly bad, it was painful. These officials don't have the stones to make a call. They will rely on everything but making a call. And you wonder if it's, oh, they're, if they're biased one way or the other, if they really need the New York Liberty to win this thing. End of the day, they just, I mean, when you look at the actual final foul count, it's very even. The free throws are even, 15-14, foul count 16-14. Turnovers are 12 to 15-12. You know, uh, very even across the board, except for the fact that the uh, Liberty shot uh, hit 13 threes and, and then Lynx hit nine. Because otherwise, there was, I mean, the offensive rebounding is really where the Liberty, you know, dominated in this game. They out-rebounded them from the offensive glass 20 to 5. So they got a lot more shots. They shot 37.8%, whereas the, the Lynx shot almost 51%. But when you go look at what happened in this game, you're watching. I mean, officiating was just, I mean, I thought it was utterly atrocious in the last five and a half minutes. These referees don't have the stones to make a freaking call. They don't do it. It's painful. But this is what happens right here. And I voice, I want Minnesota to win. I want the Lynx to win. That's who I'm pulling for. But I am an objective observer in how this stuff goes. So take a look at what we got here. This is right now with 32 seconds left. You're running a screen roll here with uh, John Paul Jones and Sabrina. <clears throat> Shoot, Yonescu. So, so John Quill rolls right to the rim, swing over. She has Nafisa Collier basically pinned, okay? And they'll show you the replay with a different angle. But this is a foul. How this is not called a foul is beyond me. It's almost like there, there's a messenger from the WNBA who's trying to tell these officials, keep this as interesting as possible for as long as possible. We want to try to milk ratings, create ratings, create narrative, because this is a foul. I don't want to hear what Ryan Rucco or Rebecca Lobo say about how great of a block shot this was. This is a foul. Finds Vandersloot, Yonescu. First of all, that, that pass came in way. The pass should come in from the wing. But right now, if you see it, John Quell Jones has Nafisa Collier's arms hooked into her. It's a foul on Nafisa Collier. It, it just is. Gives it up, Jones inside. And they say this is a great block shot. That's a foul. Foul, foul, foul. They should be at two free throws with a chance to go up 85 80. Instead, Shot clock. Collier is saying what happened, but sweetheart, you fouled her. Like, you're not allowed to hook her arms. For New York, watch the feast and, and I battling inside. Right here. You have your back to 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 John Quell Jones. You're foul. That's a foul. Already, we have a foul. You hooked your arm into John Quell Jones. She's gonna try to catch the ball. Jones you're fouling her. That's a foul. It's a foul already. I'm telling you, folks, this is a foul. Her arm hooked. How did that still? And then, and then the arm is still hooked. And then you block the shot, and you still hit her. How this wasn't called a foul to me is mind blowing. But then let's go look at what happens after that, where we see continued bad basketball. Fisa still end up blocking that. She didn't end up blocking that shot. She got a damn foul. It was a foul for Christ's sake. Let me move to this video but right here. Other one was stuck. And this is here. Okay, what is Brianna Stewart doing? Brianna Stewart, there's only five seconds left on the shot clock right here. You need to go get a shot. What is Brianna Stewart doing? Two-time MVP? Here for a reason. Three Back her down. Shot. Go. Shoot the ball. Go up with your left hand. Oh, I forgot. Oh, my God. Left hand. WNBA players don't have left hands. If they're right-handed, WNBA players do not have a left hand. It's time we accept it. I I have had to accept it, and I'll and, I'll, and it'll come and it will it will come up again. 
It will come up again. First of all, why is she kicking out here? Look, look at this. Look, will, you, will you look at this? Or would you look at would you look at the player that is sitting right there on the box? I I, I mean, Brandon Swift's being triple teamed. Triple teamed. I think that's Fibich. I think. And you're gonna kick it out to John Quell Jones. Who? Stewart gives it up. Who doesn't shoot it? Shoot the ball. There's one second on the shot clock. Look at under the rim. This is the player here that was wide the hell open that they, that Brianna Stewart didn't look at for a layup. But what is John Quell Jones doing? Let's run this back. Shot when her other one was stuck. Again, for a you're backing her down. Boom, right there. She's wide open. If you kick to the right, that's a that's a six footer or a layup. Instead, you kick out to John Quell Jones. Shoot the damn ball! So you have a turnover. That was the fifth turnover in the final five minutes of regulation. Now we got this situation here where I want I. I there was enough time where I thought you could have gone two for one. I mean, I could you go for a not two for one, but go for a two, you know, either hope you get foul or then foul and then make them make free throws. I'm never one to to want to rush a three just because, but that's the way the league is now. That's the way basketball is now. Because this first Courtney Williams shot was not a good look. It was a bad shot. Minnesota has its reset timeout to use if they need it. Inbound to Smith. Smith. Like right here, at this point, you already know they're going to shoot a three because they have their off. Like everyone's around the three point line. You have no one going to the rim. Yeah, you're pretty much stuck shooting a three now. Gives it up to Collier. And then you're running this. Like right here, this is a bad shot. This right here is a bad shot. I thought she could have gone right to the basket on that and a layup. She takes this shot, but guess what? They grab the rebound. Look where John Quell Jones is. She's literally guard. She's 24 feet from the basket. Look where Brianna Stewart is. She's, tw she's 18 feet from the basket. But people ain't boxing out. Watch watch this poor, poor box out, John. Williams Who the hell is Sabrina Ionesco, Ionesco boxing out? The player she's guarding ran right past her. There is this thing in the WNBA where people just ball watch. You're just ball watching. You, you have assignments in, in the game. Part of your assignment is box out. If you box out and you grab this rebound, the game is over. You're going to get fouled. You're going to get two. You'll probably make at least one. Game is over. It's dead. Tipped. You see who's crashing. You got one, two, three, three New York Liberty players way outside. You got four battling three. And you see what happens here. This is just a sickening shot. Like, this is just a sickening shot by Courtney Williams. To hit this shot, at this point, you got to shoot three. And then horrendous closeout. Just out of, out of control, bad closeout by Sabrina. Block, foul. Oop. I mean, look, that was a sick-ass shot. Sick-ass shot. You got, that, when, when you make shots like that, you salute people. But this game shouldn't have come down to this. Shouldn't have come down to this. So now we get past this point, and now here we are, and we got five and a half seconds left. And this is where I go back to just awful, awful officiating, just horrible, horrible, cowardly officiating, just cowardly. With Jones inbounding, a Jones has to get it in, find Jonescu who's fouled. So they, foul, they, they fouled on immediately because they had a foul to give, but... Again, first off, Jones should have gotten the ball right here in the corner. You're going to see Brianna Stewart come wide open. You've got to make – John Quell Jones has to make this pass. If you can't make the pass, you shouldn't be the inbound player because this is a this is a pass that Caitlin Clark was making her sleep. Boom, she is wide open. Brianna Stewart is wide open. Lafisa Collier is stuck on that screen. Courtney Williams let her go. 
I don't know who that is on the top. It's too small on my screen. I'm going to have to just make my screen bigger. Yeah, I can't tell who that is. That's uh, I don't know which one that is. <laughs> I don't know who that is specifically. I can't tell. But that pass has got to go right there. That's a layup. Well, in theory, it's a layup. It's a wide open. It's a wide open shot. As it's as good a look as you're gonna get. And she doesn't make the pass. Has to get it in. And then she didn't even make the pass in the corner when Brianna Stewart was wide open there, too. I mean, she was open the entire possession. It's like, were you even looking for Brianna Stewart on that play? So now we go back. <clears throat> so now we're here again. They're going to the same damn thing, okay? This is where I have a huge problem. Because so we got bad basketball again, combined with the five turnovers. And now we're going to go to this situation. This video might run a lot longer than I expected. <laughs> because... I, I'm I'm just this is why people don't watch this shit. Because when you watch it, you're sitting here saying, like, this is elementary shit. This is middle school. This is high school. These the mistakes they make are high school level mistakes. Because a lot of these turnovers they committed were just bad. They were bad turnovers. Just like there's turnovers and then there's bad turnovers. And these are bad. So watch how this ball goes in to Brianna Stewart this time. When she's being guarded very tightly. Jones to inbound again. Same play. Looking for. Pass should have come right here to the middle to Courtney Vandersloot. That's where the pass should have gone to. Courtney Vandersloot is wide the hell open. And you know what you can do right here? You get the. Courtney Vandersloot's a good point guard. Courtney Vandersloot turns, hand off to Sabrina. Sabrina's going to get a wide open 15 footer. And you might win the game right there. She's going she's gonna to run right off of her. It would be a handoff, and she would have a wide-open look. Look where Courtney Williams is. She's playing under the free-throw line. You know, so I, I just think that was really – that's that's Feebich in the back, in the, in the corner. Stewart can't get it to her, knocked out of bounds, and it lasted – This ball – this is where it's cowardice. This ball clearly went off Brianna Stewart's foot. Like, not even debatable clear. Not even remotely debatable. So apparently there was a rule where it used to be in the final two minutes, they would check everything. Now they don't have that rule. Now you need to, to challenge it. So instead, they don't have a timeout to challenge it. They only have a um they didn't have a, they didn't have a timeout to challenge it. So now the ball goes in a bounce, and you have coward one and coward two, top right, top left. You can't blame the lady on the bottom, she's nowhere near the play. But these two guys are right there. Play happens right in front of their face, and they're going to sit here and signal jump ball. At this point, Minnesota is going to get the ball and get fouled and shoot free throws. Instead, they're going to call a jump ball. A jump ball. You can't be serious. It's just bad. Look at the colorful shoes. The colorful shoes there. You got one. All the colorful shoes. All the, all the colorful blah, blah. You have the colorful colorful shoes of the Lynx player on the ball. But then the colorful shoes are Brianna Stewart's, not Nafisa Collier's. Look at that ball. Oh, that right off the foot. Like right off in colorful out. shoes. Such oh, a bad call. Referee is standing right here. He's looking at it. The other referee's on the baseline. He's looking at it too. They both missed this? Unless it hit the foot of Stewart. Bro, this is such a bad call. And, that, and it is such a bad a call. Jump ball. And now we're sitting here and they're running a jump ball, and you got Nafisa Collier and Brandon Stewart jumping. And I'm trying to figure out why whatever happened here happened because they never really showed us. This is this is where you're wondering what's going on. You had a violation, a random viol I've never seen a jump ball violation on the circle. Ever, ever, not in a professional setting. Maybe you've seen it on the jump, the people jumping where someone steals the tip. I've never seen a, a, a violation. I don't even know what the violation is. But let's look at this play again. Look at the ball. Clearly, it's clearly off Brown Stewart's foot. Yes, yes. 
It's even the even the guy, even Rebecca Lobo and Ryan Rigger saying it's off of Brianna Stewart. Like, this is the problem with the WNBA. You literally could have had a game one of the finals decided on an absolutely horrendous call. A horrendous call. Two referees who don't have the stones to point towards Minnesota because they know that crap is off of, off of New York and they're in the Barclays in New York. They don't have the stones. It's a joke. Yeah, I'm going to be a conspiracy theorist. That's They were trying to give that game to the New York Liberty at that point. Earlier, they're trying to give them, they're, 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 they were screwing the New York Liberty. Now they're trying to give it to them. I don't even know what to say because it's so bad both ways. Actually, no, it's so bad one way at this point. At one, no, I'm sorry. It's so bad both ways because John Quill Jones got fouled. This happens in the other direction. It's like they're trying to even out bad calls. You don't even out bad calls. But again, this is just the continuation of awful officiating with the WNBA. So you look at this jump ball, and here's, I think it's Batanji, Laney Hamilton, or whatever her name is, and Courtney Williams. And I'm trying to figure out why, what happened here. 3.9 to go. New York may have caught a break what? there. Stewart and Collier to jump. Where is the, and where is the oh, violation? So. They just called a random violation, and no one knows. They didn't show a replay of this violation. They show nothing. They just give the ball to bounce to the New York Liberty with with a second, uh, with, with four seconds to go or whatever it was. And we have no explanation of this violation. What the violation was, I still do, don't know. On the score thing, it says, on the, on, the, on the play-by-play, Courtney Williams jump ball violation. What was the violation? She's behind the line. What, what did she do? She step on the line? I can tell you right this. I've watched plenty of jump balls, and guys are always in the line. Players are always on the line. But let's go look. So now New York will inbound. Ionescu, and remember, New York still. And now we're going to need the ball to Brianna Stewart, and she's going to go down the lane. And uh, da da da. Now not Jones. Here's Ionescu into Stewart. Stewart for the win. No call. Block shot. Okay, no call. Block shot. There's one second left. You're under the basket. Look at this. Once again, trying to get Stewie a look inside. Good defense. I, I mean, you arguably could have called the foul there. You arguably could have called the foul right there. There is something to be said for. Let's go pull it. Right here. If you position for defense is straight up. If your arm is like this, it's typically called a foul. Stewie, a look inside. Look at where, look at Gallier's arm. Her arm is tilted at a down. Left arm is tilted at a downward angle. The girl, the woman on the left, is also potentially banging into her. She's going up. She's shooting the ball with her right hand. And we're gonna sit here and say Defense. that's a block. Collier's arms. That could have been a call to foul. I, I I understand people don't want games decided by fouls, but you had, but then you, but then the game ended up being the potentially being, potentially being decided by a foul on this next play right here. Second to go, New York doesn't use its reset. Ionescu. Look at this. Look at this screen that they set where somehow the defensive player of the year. First off, look at the defensive position on the inbound play. You're doing, you you need to be defending the paint, not the perimeter. You have to defend the paint. In fact, I would go on to I I go on to say that this just type of defensive positioning by this by it looks like McBride is awful. I you you're you're geez, what is the word? Parallel would be. I don't know if that's what it is, but her back is to the is back, her to the players there. She can't have her back like that, in my opinion, to the players there. She needs to be angled first of all, not like this, not like this, but like this, where she's got her back right. She's right. She's tilted. I wish I had arrows to do this, but 
this is where awful coaching will probably do all this stuff for you tomorrow. But her back should be tilted towards the paint to where she's blocking any pass to the paint. Instead, she's playing straight up, which makes the pass a lot easier. This pick that gets Brianna Stewart wide open is just ridiculous. Collier, how she's getting caught on this or why she's going through this rather than she's just dropping back into the paint to prevent the, that pass. It's crazy to me. Like she's following her. I don't know why you're following her. In that case, you're, I don't know why you're following her. They got one second. One second. To get it in. And Courtney Williams, I don't know what she's doing. It seems like, uh, I can't tell who that is. Might be Alana Smith. Yeah, it might be. Um, she actually sees Brianna Stewart going. But this is a clear foul. Stewart underneath. She's smothered. They smothered. She, they think they want. This was as obvious and clear a foul call as it gets. Easy call. And it's over. No. First of all, you're, com you're, you're complaining about this call. Uh, I mean, you know, I get it. You're going to complain. This is a foul. This is a foul in second one of the game and last second of the game. A foul is called on Minnesota. You're, you're, what are you talking about? Like, right here, boom. If Courtney Williams, I mean, I don't know that Courtney Williams could have done anything because if she turns and faces another girl, gets the ball potentially, I don't know. But I don't think that Collier should be chasing that. She should have gone under that. I don't think that... I, the play would not have had Brianna Stewart popping out. I just don't think it would have happened. She She's already being fouled. If you look at Collier's right hand, she has her hand around her waist. That's a foul already. She's already fouling her. The other defender has her right arm about to hack down. It's a foul. That's a foul right there. Foul. Easy call. Foul. And Collier's left arm is wrapped around. It's a foul. It's an easy call, folks. Easy call. So there's no, but again, we're going to go back and look at all these different situations that led up to this play. Awful play by the Liberty. Turnover after turnover after turnover after turnover after turnover. A referee missing a clear out of bounds call. Like clear. A suspect jump ball violation that we have no explanation on what the actual violation was. I didn't see her jump in early, so I i mean, I was watching. I don't think she jumped in any any earlier than I've ever seen in any other game. So, and then they said, like, she took it on purpose. Who who would do that? Ruko suggested that they took it on purpose to set up their defense. What? Huh? Are you truly suggesting that with under four seconds to go in a game, in a one, with a one-point lead, you're going to purposefully – Give the ball away and not give yourself a chance for a jump ball and commit an on-purpose jump ball violation to give the ball to the other team to give them a chance to win the game. That has got to be the dumbest thing I've ever heard from a, a commentator in the history of dumb comments from a commentator. In what world would that make sense? She did not do that on purpose. But I don't know what the call really was or why it was called because I didn't see her jump in. I thought she jumped in when the damn ball was thrown up in the air, which is perfectly legal. As far as I know, I didn't know that it's not. But here, this is a foul. Yeah, the left arm of Nafisa Collier on the left. Either way, they're going back to this play and showing this crap to you again. Two Look at that pink. Attempt. Look at that pink shoot. Boom. Like clear off. I mean, clear as day. Of Stewart goes. Needless to say, needless to say, at this point, Rianster goes to the line for two. I'll bring you up to speed. She goes to the line for two. She makes the first. She misses the second. Choked her ass off. Your league, your two-time league MVP choked her ass off at the free throw line with a chance to win game one. There was 0.8 tenths of the second on that foul. So you get your game goes into overtime at 84 all. And you proceed to get about as bad a basketball as you can get over the over that time period in that overtime. The final score, they, the Minnesota scored 11 and the, the Liberty scored nine. But to, to keep it simple, <clears throat> so in overtime, in overtime, which I'm going to show you right now, the Liberty committed three turnovers in overtime. Again, five minutes. So over a 10 minute period, they committed eight of their 15 total turnovers. So a complete meltdown. 
Now, the Lynx in overtime committed a total of 12 turnovers total. They committed four in overtime. They tried to give the game away, and I'll show you how. They try to give it away. It's like you have control, and now let me hear. Here's a gift. Not to mention you have these missed layups both ways, but we'll, we'll get into that. Let's get on to this point. Here we go. This is the first possession of overtime. Here we go. First possession. Boom, turnover. Horrible pass. Horrible pass. Horrible pass. Horrible. Horrible pass. And here you go. Turnover. Right back. Here we go. So that's back to back turnovers. Let's get to the point where. Sorry, this 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 was to show another. This was not a turnover, but an otherwise terrible possession where the the Liberty are just dribbling the ball on the top of the key, and Sabrina gets a a bad looking shot, but she got a shot up, and then the ball bounced back to her, and she actually got a better look on the bounce back. Just bad again, bad basketball, awful. Right back to her, rolls back to her, misses. But that possession was terrible, terrible possession, terrible possession. Here we go, another turnover right there, another turnover. This is just turnover city right back. This is turnovers and turnovers and turnovers. Here we go, another turnover right here, right here. This is a this is a pass that Caitlin Clark makes in her sleep. This was a pick and roll with McBride, and you I mean you see the you can see the roller right there is wide the hell open, and instead of dumping it off, turns it over. Like this is just trash. This is the first minute of overtime, minute and a half. First minute and a half of overtime. Now we're gonna get back get back to now bad officiating again. <clears throat> Scores 86-84. Was another turnover here. Let me check real quick. Let's see. This turnover. Another turnover. This will be another turnover right here. Yeah, another turnover. My bad. Another turnover. Like, like this is atrocious. This is three turnovers in the first 90 seconds of overtime, I believe it was. And yet Minnesota's only up two because they've turned it over themselves. Right. Now we're gonna get into bad refereeing again. Again, bad refereeing. And I'm not understanding what the hell Cheryl Reeve was doing here either, because I think she could have challenged it. At least that's what they said in the commentating. But if you look at this, this is just brutal, brutal, brutal. Just not good. You watch this here. This is clearly off John Quell Jones on this play. Watch. That's clearly off John Quell Jones. They give it back to the New York Liberty. You have a four-point game now. The Lynx are up four. And what did you do? You gave the ball right back to the Liberty. So, again, this is like I'm not understanding what these officials are doing, but it's like back and forth with just either bad calls, bad play. It's just nonstop shit. And this was in five and a half minutes, folks. I'm talking for 35 minutes, about five and a half minutes of horrendous basketball. Like, you can't. Look at this. Everything has just looked so tough. That's right off John Quill Jones' hand. And then they didn't challenge it. They didn't look at it. And this is what happens. Delaney Hamilton in for New York. Actually. Then they get another. Then, then they get another rebound blown. Here we go. This ball, this ball goes out of bounds off of Minnesota. But now John Quill Jones, boom, three. You have a one point game. So that missed call by the official led to that play. So now you have an 88-87 game, right? But we have a we have an absolute sniper here, and Courtney Williams clearly is never afraid to take the shot. I give her much credit. She is never afraid to shoot this ball. Watch. Boom. Shot. Dagger. Dagger. And just when you're about to, when I'm saying, I'm saying, Courtney Williams is taking over this game. She comes back with another layup to make it 93 89. 
and then this happens. Like, it, <clears throat> then this happens. So it's 93.89, and then this happens. Will fire. Can't hit. This layup. Rebound. Here, Courtney Lewis has the ball. Courtney Lewis has the ball. You're the point guard. You're the point guard. Call timeout if you have to. Why isn't sure are we streaming to call timeout? I don't know, because her point guard has the ball. But you might want to call timeout in this situation. Maybe not. I'm not sure. I think Cheryl Reeve is presuming I got my point guard with the ball. She's not going to go do this. Bebish hits the floor. And a steal. Yonescu. Like, <laughs> she's not going to go do that, right? She's not. She can't possibly. She's my point guard. She had so many options here. She had so many options. First of all, hold the ball. One option is just hold the ball. That's one op option one. Keep your dribble. Go to the left. You're the quickest one on the court. Why aren't you dribbling down the floor? There's no one down the floor. Dribble, put, man, put your afterburners on and dribble past her. She's going to foul you. This is it's like brain-dead basketball. Folks, brain-dead basketball. This is painful. Bust your ass down the sideline. She's not going to be able to stop you. Instead, she goes floor. the wrong direction and just gives it to Ina. And that's who. And now you have a two-point game. So, so then we get this. Next possession, immediate, immediately. Immediately. And here's the thing. Minnesota call timeout. So calling timeout when Williams had the ball wouldn't have been a bad decision because they just called timeout after she turned the ball over. Finding Smith. <laughs> immediately. Immediate bad pass. Comes up with the steal. Jones ties it. Tie game. I, I'm tie game. Folks, this is why people don't want to watch this. It's so exciting, it's so disturbing. It, I actually said it's so exciting yet so disturbing that you can watch such low levels of basketball and yet be so excited watching these low levels of basketball because the game is close and there's so much on the line naturally. So you're drawn to watch it. I mean, I put so much energy into the WNBA this year that, yeah, I do kind of want to watch it, but I don't want to be part of the million plus viewers potentially. So I don't want to blame myself if they do break a million. Did they break a million tonight? I don't know. We'll find out tomorrow. I know that I only watched five and a half minutes, and I'm sure the peak time for this game was probably the last five and a half minutes of this game. But the Yankees probably broke four or five million viewers against Kansas City. The 49ers and Seahawks, I don't know what they did tonight, but they probably broke a few million on, on Prime. So I don't know what this game did. But at the, at the end of the day, it was so – it was ex exhilarating, exhausting, mentally disturbing, and just plain shitty basketball combined with embarrassingly bad officiating where you have officials that won't make calls or just are just not good at their jobs. Can we employ some referees who are higher than an elementary school level? Because these officials, the WNBA, for the entirety of this season have completely sucked completely sucked. And yet this is what these women are getting in the WNBA finals. They deserve better. Deserve. They deserve better. They earn more than this. They're professional athletes. They should have referees that are some level of competency for professional sports. They should. But let's get to this. So now... This is a this is a great shot here by Nafisa Collier to give them the two point lead. This is a great shot. I mean that shot that passes way too late. This is a great shot. 
that's just a great shot. But that pass t- took way too long. Way too long. Good shot. Oh, good shot. Now, finally, we are here at the final. And I hope you've come 40 minutes with me through this journey of bad basketball and bad officiating. Yet exhilarating, exciting. And I brought you the energy that you deserve, that you've earned because you follow Come On Now, the podcast. You follow Rudy's rant. You become appreciative of what I do in these videos. This speaks for why people do not watch or just get bothered by the WNBA. This is your two-time league MVP. Nafisa Collier here defensively made a terrible decision. She tried to go for a steal. She didn't play solid defense. She created this lane to the basket. Overplayed. She's beaten already. She's beaten already. Brianna Stewart has a beeline to the rim. A beeline. Both those players have their backs to the backs to the ball. Find Stewart. Laying. Courtney Williams isn't coming all the way in. At this point, Nafisa Collier, remember, she has five fouls. She's not going to foul her. They're, they're up two. If she makes the layup, they're going to go to double overtime. She's not going to foul herself out of this game for a possibility of Stewart making two free throws or potentially getting an and one. And then let's say she makes two and they go to overtime, double OT. Then she's not in the game. She fouled out. So she doesn't get near. In fact, if you look, she's backed off. She's completely backed off. She's not near. She is not near her. You got two white, bluntly, two white girls coming to play defense. One's under the basket. Brianna Stewart, you're a league MVP twice. Twice. I mean, come on. This is a left-handed bunny. This is a left-handed bunny. This is not a contested shot, people. This is not a contested shot. For the tie. And she didn't just miss it. She didn't just miss it. She flat out airmailed it. She air mailed this shot. This is the layup and Minnesota. I, I, I mean, boss, bro. Let's get the other vantage point right here. All season finishes this game. I, I mean, God. Where's the other? They're going to show the other angle. Look at this. Okay, Collier's already blew it. She blew it right here. She should not have gone for this steal. You play solid defense. You play solid. So this is another professional basketball player mistake. This is a woman who's the defensive player of the year. Just awful defensive. Te- awful defensively here. Awful. Beaten. You're gone. You're gone. And it's. Not just I, I mean, right now, she's she, her hands are up. She's not going to do anything. She's not going to try to block this. It's not worth it. You have Alana Smith, and that's Bridget Carlton. Oh. It's the whole- Carlton's not doing dog doo-doo. If you go up with your left hand, it's a layup. Oh, here we go, ladies. WNBA players don't have layups. I'm sorry, left hands. Their left hands are whack. Unless you're left-handed, they don't have left hands. She goes up with her right hand. This is elementary school. Look at this. Carlton's on the left, bro. She's not near her. She's not blocking this. She's not even contesting this. This is just like, I'm trying to distract you type of thing. You have a wide open. Your face is looking right at the rim. I I mean, this is a wide open layup. This is a layup that she should make 10 out of 10 times. Oops, I'm sorry. She missed this one. That ball's already in the air. So this is not a contest. Smith isn't contesting shit. She's under the rim. She's under the rim. She's not contesting anything. Look at that. I mean. Wow, wow. God, dog, that's so bad. That's so bad. That's just so bad. Folks, if you rolled with me for 45 minutes here, I appreciate it. But the WNBA gives you every reason and shows you why it's so hard to watch this stuff. If if the men played basketball like this, I wouldn't watch the NBA at all. If men played like this in the NBA, I would not watch it. It is not a good product. They'll tell you it was great. 
They say they have a full house of 17,732 or close to it. I don't believe those numbers at all. Barclays Center capacity. It says the offer is 17,732 for basketball. I would tell you that's a lie because I showed you a lot of tickets that are available yesterday. I'm sorry, today, this morning, this morning when I put that video got posted, 32 bucks. Those tickets were available at like a midnight last night. I don't believe they sold this crap out. I don't believe it. I, I refuse to believe it when I saw. And there were truckloads of tickets available. Truckloads of tickets available. I, I'm, a, I'm on Ticketmaster right now for Sunday. They still have standard tickets available. I'm looking at them. 59.55 gets you in. Standard ticket. They have stuff on the floor. Or closer to VIP 8, VIP 24. They got a lower level. Not a ton, but they got tickets available. And if you go look at their resale, the resale is less than, again, the resale costs less than the standard ticket. I, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. But that's a 3 p.m. game on a Sunday going against NFL football. Thought it'd be at night. They put their, they put up, can you imagine they put a finals game at 3 p.m.? 3 p.m.? I don't think the NBA would ever put a finals game at 3 p.m., but, hey, it's the WNBA. And if you go back and you look a little further back and you uh, check out – I'm curious here because I'm not sure, but I want to take a look at this real fast before we go. So, the remember, they, they say their capacity is 17,732. Well, against the uh, – I guess the Chicago Sky, when Angel Reese continued her padded streak, they had an attendance of 17,758. So there were magically 26 more people in that arena for that game. And there were, when they played Indiana, on May 18th, they had 7, 17,735. So they had three more than they had tonight. And then when they played Indiana on June 2nd, they had 17,401. So that was a little bit less. But needless to say, I don't trust the numbers of the WNBA. I really don't because I know what I saw this morning. And I have a hard time believing that they sold those tickets when you could have gotten tickets for less on the, on the secondhand market. Why would you pay full price when you can get them for less than that? <clears throat> it doesn't make a lot of sense. And there were a lot more tickets available this morning than there are actually for Sunday. So who knows? We shall see what happens with this uh, WNBA Finals. It's 1-0 Minnesota. But anyhow, that's all I got for now. Be sure to uh, jump over to Rudy's Rant and subscribe there. I'm going to be putting up more content as we go on that on that YouTube channel. I appreciate y'all subscribing there. And uh sure to... Like, subscribe, pound that like button, subscribe to this channel, come on now the podcast. And uh, if you haven't done so, because I know there's plenty of people that watch that haven't done so, and pound that like button and uh, share this video. Facts over feelings, baby. Come on now.